guilt feeling. This is one of the most important word. We feel guilty. We make others feel guilty. Others make us feel guilty. Never feel guilty. You are not guilty. You may be ignorant. The moment you are in a total standstill, you have reached. Then there is no more. And this can be done any moment. If you understand, this can happen this very moment. God is life. God is existence. And God is the case. But there are problems. Theologians have created it. The first problem they have created and because of which this remembering becomes impossible. To remember that you are already divine becomes impossible. Because the feeling of guilt has been created by the theologians. To remember that you are already divine becomes impossible is a very deep condemnatory attitude. You go on condemning yourself. You are sinner. They have created guilt in you. So how can a sinner be right this very moment the divine? How can a sinner attain to his divinity? He will have to get rid of sin first. He will have to suffer for his sins and time will be needed. He will have to pass through the process of purifications. And only when he has become holy, a saint, will he have the glimpse of the divine. This is the conspiracy of theologians. Particularly in the West, Christianity has given everybody a deep guilt complex. Everybody is guilty. Not only about your own sins that you have committed, but also about the sins that Adam committed in the very beginning. It is said, it is the belief of the Christian theologians. You are guilty for it. You carry a burden, a long burden of guilt. How can you think, imagine, conceive that right this very moment God is happening to you? Devil can happen, can be imagined but not God. You can think of yourself as devil but never as divine. And everybody makes you the belief that you are devil, not divine. No one says that you are divine. This creation of a guilt complex was needed not for you but for religions to maintain their conspiracy and supremacy. Their business can continue only if they create guilt in you. The whole business of the religion depends on the guilt feeling that they have created in the masses, that they have created in you. Churches, temples, religions exist on your guilt feeling. All these religious custodians and the places, the so-called places of your worship exist on your guilt. God has not created them. Your guilt has created them. When you feel guilty, you need a priest to confess to. When you feel guilty, you need someone to lead, to purify you. When you feel guilty, you have lost your center. Now, it is only someone who can lead you. This is all the conspiracy, the business of the churches. You can become a follower only when you have lost your center. As long as you have your center, you have discovered it, you can never be a follower. If you are right in your center, there is no question of following and it cannot arise. You can become a part of the crowd only when you are not yourself. So to belong to Christianity or Hinduism or Islam or this group or that, these are simply guilt feelings. You cannot be alone. You are so guilty that you cannot rely on yourself. And the society will not allow you to rely on yourself. And you cannot be independent. Somebody, some great organization, some cult, creed is needed. So under its blanket you can hide and you can forget your guilt. And then you need some savior. You need someone who can save you for your sins. This is the way of the religions and this is absolutely absurd. Christians say Jesus suffered for the sins of the whole humanity. The whole logic is 
absent. Adam committed the sin and you are guilty. But what was the sin of Adam? Was disobedience the sin? Can disobedience be considered a sin? But it has been conspired to be considered a sin. The whole logic is absent. Adam committed the sin of disobeying God. So he was guilty. And because you are the descendant of Adam, so you are guilty as well. Then Jesus suffers for you. And your guilt is forgiven. Your sin is forgiven. So the whole deal is between Adam and Jesus. You are just the puppets to be used by the organized religions. Sometimes Adam leads evil, so you move into sin. Other times Jesus leads you. You move into the kingdom of God, but you yourself are nothing, just a puppet. But to exploit religions had to create a guilt feeling. Because of that guilt feeling, you are not accepted as you are. You cannot conceive of yourself as already in the kingdom of heaven, being divine. With a master, this guilt feeling has to be dropped. You are not sinner. You are not guilty. Whatsoever you are, the existence accepts you. It is so because divine wills it so. As you are, you are accepted. The sun, the moon, the stars, nothing stops giving you light if you are a sinner or if you are a holy. It makes no difference to them. This is the second thing to remember. Do not condemn yourself. Otherwise, nothing can be done. Do not reject yourself. Don't be an enemy to yourself. Be loving and friendly and accept whatsoever you are. I am not saying that there is nothing wrong in you. I am not saying that you do not need any transformation. You need it. There are many wrongs, wrong beliefs. But those wrongs are not sins. They are illnesses or misdemeanors or diseases. Someone has fever. He is not a sinner. He needs our compassion. But our help to come out to him is essential. He needs help to come out of that state of fever that he is in. We do not condemn if someone gets fever. If we just condemn, then he will also condemn his fever and then the whole thing goes wrong. Because once you condemn your fever, you start suppressing it. The man cannot say to the others, I am feeling feverish. I am feverish. Because the moment he says it, everybody will think that he is a sinner. So he goes on saying, I am healthy. Who says I have fever? If the thermometer shows, it must be thermometer's fault. It must be wrong. I am okay. I, he cannot accept his fever and then nothing can be done. He goes on hiding and suppressing. That's why you have been doing it. That is what you have been doing. There are so many wrongs, but remember those wrongs are just illnesses, not sins. Errors, mistakes, but not sins. You are not guilty. You may be ignorant. You may not know as much as it is needed to live a pure and innocent life. You may be ignorant and you may not know as much as is needed to live a pure and innocent life. But that means you are ignorant, innocent, not guilty. Try to understand the distinction between these words, ignorance, innocence and guilt. Very well, because much depends on it. To me, you are divine. You may be erroneous. God within you may be ill. God within may be ignorant. Maybe because of the opaque layer of your intelligence, of your body-mind realm, the image of God may not be reflecting clearly. When there is a fog, there is mist, you do not see the images clearly. Everything is blocked. So when you are erroneous, the God within you may be ill, God within you may be ignorant because the true manifestation is hidden by the mist of ignorance. 
and that's why the God within you may be committing many mistakes. But the God is not committing any sin. What is the difference when you commit a mistake? You do not condemn yourself. When you miss a traffic light or when you miss a turn, is it a mistake or sin? Mistake can be corrected. It does not create guilt feeling, but sin creates a guilt feeling. The mistake is condemned, but not you. Mistake is condemned, but not you. When you call it a sin, you are condemned. You are wrong, not the act. What is really important, your technique of doing or getting involved in a particular act may be wrong. And because of that, you are not getting the desired results. This is mistake. You are erroneous. Your acts may be wrong, but you are not. You are totally accepted as you are. Your being is the highest flower that has happened to this earth. You are the salt of this earth. Howsoever erroneous, you are the very glory of existence. You are the ultimate flowering of the existence. You need to be nourished, taken care of, so that the flower blossoms in its total glory. Remember this, I accept you and want you to accept yourself. Not that there is going to be no transformation or need for transformation, but that only through this acceptance that transformation is possible. If you condemn yourself and do not accept yourself as you are, there can be no transformation possible. Once you accept your being, there is no suppression. Once you accept your being, the whole being comes into consciousness. There is no need to hide and to push some parts, fragments into darkness, into unconsciousness. The unconscious is the byproduct of Christianity. There is nothing like the unconscious. If you accept yourself, your whole mind will be conscious that you have accepted your mistake. To accept your mistake, your shortcoming, is the first criteria to be conscious. If you deny, reject, condemn, then the condemned part will move into darkness. Not that they will not act now. They will act more, but their action will be now hidden. If you are condemned for something, you will go and hide and do that thing. And this is what happens. All around when you look into the wife condemns the husband, the husband condemns the wife, the parents condemn the children, but that does that mean that they stop doing that? They go and hide and do those things. But their actions will now be hidden, overted and disguised. It will not be apparent, it will take a hidden course. You can face it directly, but you will not face it directly and it goes on working. If you face it directly, you accept it, then there is no problem. You cannot face it directly, but it goes on working. The unconscious creates the guilt in you. Once you accept that there is no unconscious, the barrier is gone, the boundary disappeared, and the conscious and unconscious become one as they are really as they should be. And when your conscious and unconscious are one, you can meditate, never before. Because unconscious creates guilt, you have to make all that is unconscious, conscious first. Your shortcomings, your faults, your mistakes that you cannot meditate, thoughts keeps on coming, you are conscious of it. The moment the boundaries of conscious and unconscious are one or dissolve into one another, you can meditate never before. Once your inner division disappears, once you become one inside, a deep silence descends upon you. A great blissfulness, a blissful moment has reached just by the disappearance of the boundaries, divisions and fragments within. The fragments between conscious and unconscious, the fragments between known and unknown, all dualities disappear. The moment duality disappears, the boundaries disappear, the divisions and the fragments too disappear, 
and there is a great moment of blissfulness. When you become one, you become healthy. When you become one, you become healthy. When you become one, you feel a silent well-being. Moment to moment, you feel grateful to existence. A gratitude happens to you and this gratitude is prayer. Nothing else is prayer. Nothing else can be called a prayer. When you become silent, moment to moment you feel grateful to existence and that feeling of gratefulness that happens to you is prayer. It is not a prayer to some God. This gratitude is an inner attitude towards existence which has given you life, love, light. Towards this existence which has blessed you in millions and millions of ways and which goes on showering upon you more and more blessings, blessings and blissful moments. But the unity is needed within. The moment that comes within you are prayer. So this is the second point to remember. Do not feel guilty or sinner or that you are wrong. If you were wrong, you would have not been there. You are there because God wants to preserve you. You are there because God loves you. You are there, that is why the whole existence supports you. You are there because you are worth the trouble, except yourself. Have a loving attitude towards yourself. The divisions within will begin to disappear. Jesus says somewhere, love your enemies as yourself. But no one loves himself. How can you love your enemies as yourself? You simply hate yourself. So hate will emanate. If you love yourself, to me, you have become religious. The first criteria is you must love yourself in order for you to love the other. If you love yourself, you are religious. And a person who loves himself, only he can love others. A person who hates himself deep down cannot love anyone else. If you cannot love yourself, how can you love anybody? If you cannot accept yourself, how can you accept anybody? Your so-called saints who go on condemning themselves, they go on condemning the whole world and they are condemning everybody. How can they be religious? The moment they condemn themselves, they condemn the whole existence. You are the nearest. If existence in you is condemned, then you accept existence. You are the nearest. If existence in you is condemned, then how can you accept existence that is far away from you? The creator is the creation. He is embedded into the creation. When you condemn the creation, you are indirectly condemning the creator. You have done something. We go on saying that this is wrong. That means you are denying the existence, then denying the intelligence of the person who has done. There may be mistakes. No guilt, no condemnation. Instead, wrongs are there. But those wrongs are not in your being, but in your doing. Your doing is wrong, but not your being. But the religions condemn your being, not your doings. They do not say anything about your actions. They say about your being because you are born in sin. Adam committed to sin the first sin. And that's why the entire humanity is in is sinner. Your being is being condemned. And in condemning your being, indirectly the God within you is being condemned. And your acts are wrong because you are not aware. You are ignorant. Not that you are sinner. Those wrongs exist because you are not alert and awake. The God is asleep in you. If you are asleep, you may do something wrong. You may be fast asleep. Sometimes you can even hear the snoring fast asleep. Mistakes are bound to happen then. My effort is here to make that God a little alert disturb him from his inner sleep to help him awake it is not condemnation and once you start being alert 
you have started being different, perfectly aware you have reached. Perfectly aware you are in Nirvana. Perfectly aware you are blissful in the kingdom of God. So never feel guilty. Never condemn anyone. Never condemn yourself or anyone else for that matter. And the moment you have stopped doing this first step, the second follows on its own. The second follows on its own. You have already reached.